for your benefit, Michael, I, I covered all the non stormwater stuff and then asked everybody to save the stormwater questions for the end. Uh, and, uh, and I've got there. There are a lot of there are a lot of updates I want to share, so I'm going to need the bulk of the time to cover the. Uh, amendments to the stormwater ratification uh, bill in the Senate. Um, but but everything non stormwater is right here on the screen uh, ordered by uh, by bill activity as as with prior reports. This report was sent out last night, uh, so you should have it in your inbox. <clears throat> so um, last week we had, I don't know, maybe maybe eight or so actions of, of bills moving forward. Sorry for the fast scroll. Um, I'll go through those those eight uh, again, skipping stormwater and saving that for the end, and then everything else on this report that that, that I'm not going to cover this morning. That means nothing happened this week, and and for some of these bills, that means they're starting to run out of time. Um, this this was the end of week five, four, five, five, right, Alan? Are we had our midway point on Wednesday. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's We're, week four. <laughs> well, there's nine weeks total. And if we had our midway point on Wednesday, I'm just trying to do the math. I can't do it. It's too complicated. We're 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 more than halfway through, and so it means that for for bills that have not made it through their first policy committee of reference, um, unless something really magical happens during um the the conferencing process when bills are heard on the floor it it means that it's it's highly unlikely that that bill can move so things are starting to happen and near the end of the report are a bunch of bills that that are are starting to look like they're uh, they're dead um, but but let's let's focus on the ones that are moving so this uh, Broder's bill uh, 1692 this sets some pre treatment uh, limits on industrial dischargers. That include PFAS and dioxane. So these are um, these got a lot of people in the kind of the PFAS world uh, a little agitated because this these standards are being imposed prior to any statewide water quality standards on PFAS. So um, anyway, a lot of people are kind of scratching their heads about this. It is still moving through the Senate, but the House Companion has not even been. Uh, scheduled at its first committee stop. So this is an example of what I mean by this can move all the way through the Senate because Broder's got a burr under his saddle. But if it hasn't even been heard in the House, uh, the companion bill hasn't hasn't you know even been scheduled. It means that this issue is likely dead. It just means the Senate really cared about it and the House did not, and that's not enough to become law. So uh, the next one is uh, 7040, which is the the Senate stormwater ratification bill. I am going to skip it. There are four amendments to this bill. I want to talk about them at the end, but it did pass unanimously yesterday uh, through the Senate. The House version was supposed to be calendared for Thursday on the House um, Infrastructure Committee, and it was not. Uh, I heard from DEP it's likely to, <clears throat> to be next week on the House Infrastructure Committee. Uh, I think one of the reasons was this was these amendments were being negotiated up to the last minute. And I think the House did not have the appetite for all of those late filed amendments that the Senate apparently did. Um, so anyway, we'll talk about that uh, next. Uh, the DEP bill um, uh, by uh, Calatiud, uh, this is the DEP train bill. It has lots of things in there. Uh, notably a new aquatic preserve for Southeast Florida for the coral reef track called the Kristen Jacobs Aquatic Preserve now. Uh, the Florida Flood Hub and some OSTDS and BMAP requirements for domestic wastewater. It's got a it's got a bunch of things in here. This is this is being described as a DEP bill with you know multiple sections referenced. Uh, this was temporarily postponed yesterday at the a purpose committee where stormwater was held and pushed to next week. <clears throat> I don't think there are any problems with it. It was just lack of time. That's that's what the that's what Broder said when when they said they pulled it. <clears throat> so uh, can, DEP stood up and walked out of the room. Can yeah. I say something about that? So we talked with Wesley Brooks two weeks ago about this, yeah. and 
He yep. his name is all over it. He, he yep. added in his name and a lot of it so that he gets more um, of the action and everything. But it could also delay a bunch of the vulnerability assessment plans that are going on right now. A lot of people are working on those, which would be a relief because they're all due July 1st. And um, it it would be really interesting to see if he gets this pushed through. So, yeah, and I, I heard some squawking from some Southeast Florida folks about the removal of some one of the NOAA higher, medium higher, whatever. Well, <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, so, he's changing. In fact, it's he's changing horses midstream, which is a bit of a problem because right now every county and community is doing sea level rise curves based on 2017 curves, and he wants to change it to 2022 curves. Um, so that's a mess, right? So you can't, you're going to have a hodgepodge of different curves. I mean, it's just pick one and stick with it. But anyway, he's changing that and that's a bit of a big deal. Okay. I don't think the curves necessarily are more conservative or not. They're just different. Got it. Well, it got TP, which just means that there's more time to negotiate with the sponsor and talk to DEP. Um, I have reached out to West Brooks with the issue from South Florida. Michael, it helps to get your perspective on on this. Maybe they're they, the the compromise is updated to the to the newer curve, but give everybody another year. I, I don't know. I haven't even talked yeah. to Wes about it. Well, that's there. They spent so much money already on it to go back and redo it for you're literally talking tenths of a foot. It's just not. It's silly, it, but okay. it, it's silly. It is. Okay. We could talk about it later, Jeff. All right. Well, I've reached out to Wes. If you want me to to say anything on your behalf, let me know, please. Keep my name out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I'm, I'm just, just one, yeah. one item, Jeff, on this issue. Everybody needs to be probably reminded that these are projections of projections. Yeah. yeah so yeah, to be talking about, you know, a few inches here and there, and having to delay everything, it just, it just doesn't make sense. So yeah. just, just whatever that footnote means. I remember from. Uh, probably middle school or or high school math don't uh, keep the seventh decimal place um you know in your answer you got to round to the significant digit right don't exactly. be more precise than, than than you need all right so um the recycling bill is because it's a nice feel good uh, measure it is passing through unanimously as it moves along uh this is just an updated uh recycling goals um, to replace the 2025 goals. Uh, water resources, th this is really uh, a misnomer in the bill title. This is about well contractor licensing. So uh, there isn't anything else in here uh, that is that is not related to well contractor licensing, but it is called regulation of water resources. So just y'all don't keep, every time I see this, I, I, I worry about it and then I re realize it's a nothing burger. It's moving through um, both House and Senate side. Mitigation bills are moving through. If you are in the mitigation space or, or care about mitigation, uh, please do pay attention to these bills. There are a lot of tweaking happening with um, committee substitutes basically at every stop, which means the mitigation stakeholders and DEP and other stakeholders are still kind of working out, negotiating, you know, who gets what. And so the, the, this is changing th some things, including you know, who can use government land for private mitigation? Uh, it, it addresses credit deficient basins. So using credits from, from basins uh, outside of your project area. L lots of stuff happening here, all kind of in the name of, we don't have enough credits and, and we're running out of credits. And so we developers need more credits. And so we need access to more land and we need to get credits from somebody, you know, steal credits from other people. Anyway, it's, I don't, I don't, thankfully, I don't practice in this space, so I don't care that much, but it's been interesting to observe the kind of the trench warfare going on there. Um, the beach uh, sampling, this is the, uh, just moves the, um, what do I want to say? The, the beach surveillance program for bacteria moves it from DOH to DEP. Uh, this is the other mitigation bill by Trunow. The, uh, rulemaking for mangrove replanting. This is rulemaking authority and direction. Uh, this is moving. And uh, I'm going to stop there because everything passed here. There's been no action this week. 
All right, so unless there are any questions, I want to switch to stormwater. Okay. Um, I got all right. So, so here's here's what's happening. I'm trying to trying to decide the best way to describe this, and I, I because it, it this is definitely complicated. So, what you're looking at right now is the current the 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 committee substitute for Senate Bill 7040, which incorporated the four amendments to the Clean Ratification Bill. And we talked about this the initial four amendments you know, two weeks ago when all this stuff was, fi was filed. And just to recap, it's expanded grandfathering, uh, relatively vanilla, just takes any grandfathering that's in current rule and make sure that it is rolled forward and referenced into the new rule. It didn't create any new current grandfathering categories. Um, the second amendment uh, was to add commas <laughs> to 8.3.4, A3, and B2. This was just to make sure that it's clear that that your if your your impairment designation and your cleanup requirements are related to the same pollutants. So you're not impaired for iron and doing the higher nutrient standards. It, it I think it was already clear, but they added commas uh, between that, you know, for the impairment of reference or for the for the you know the the for the nutrient impairment. They they added those commas to make sure it's abundantly clear that that your treatment is tied to that nutrient. The third one was expanded, uh, expanded the redevelopment um, alternative design standards to impaired watersheds. That was the big one, the, the, the kind of the giveaway, if you want to call it that. DEP doesn't like using those words, but they, they saw it as, you know, we're allowing redevelopment at a lower standard in, in some locations, but not in others. And there's unintended consequences there. We want to encourage redevelopment over new development everywhere. And so they expanded it to everywhere. That's, I think, probably the the the, the explanation for public consumption. Um, the fourth one was accepted the O and M uh, accepted from the the rule O and M requirements, uh, more specific O and M requirements in South Florida Water Manager District rule and in DAX rules. All of that stuff was done in the committee substitute. And so you're looking at the committee substitute with with those changes already incorporated. And what happened yesterday is really the, starting the night before is there were a flurry of late filed amendments. Um, some of those amendments were amendments to amendments. And 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 at the you know, from the dais yesterday, it, it, it there you could tell that there were some members that were frustrated by the perception that stuff was happening at the last minute. People didn't have a chance to read everything. It wasn't even clear uh, to some of the members, you know, where the amendments fit together. And then the way the way this ratification bill is written, it's rewriting rule. And so let me let me give you an example of. Uh, hang on, I have, it, I have it pulled up, I promise. Um, they. You know they're, they're they're saying between lines you know between lines 118 to 119 add this stuff and and some and these things are adding changes to the applicant's handbook so if you're not really like cross-referencing the applicant's handbook to the language that's being added the language that's being added is adding language to the bill which then adds language to the handbook does everybody understand what i'm saying and and they're and they're adding it as as kind of insert language. So it is really hard to to and 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 it does not yet exist in in its entirety. Seeing the changes in line with the current version of the applicant's handbook. So I so I actually have something from DEP on on three of these amendments, and then the fourth one I'll I'll explain separately. So. So I'm, I'm I'm on the rule, or excuse me, I'm on the bill. Uh, this was one of the amendments that was passed yesterday. Was an um, was was uh, amendments that added. There, there are three amendments in here that all got kind of lumped together in this between lines 109 and 110. That adds three new things. It adds some presumption language to the applicant's handbook 8.2.2. 
it adds a cross reference to section nine in 8.3.1 and it adds some comfort i'm calling comfort language to 9.1 now i have all of those from dep where they put it in line in the handbook all right so 8.2.2 currently does not is is only one paragraph all right but what what this would do is put a sorry i guess it's two paragraphs one two yeah it's two paragraphs this would add a third paragraph and so this is in line so you can see what it does in line in 8.2.2 with this document i will ship this document out after the after the call this is just a scan of something that that dep handed out so when dep was was staffing this with senate staff they put this document together so they could understand the effect and explain the effect. Um, I don't think the bill analysis does a great job, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best to explain this, and I'm hopeful that when the committee, the CS for CS comes out, there'll be a better bill analysis that will tie all this together neatly. But but in the meantime, so people can understand and communicate to your, your clients or, or stakeholders that you're talking with, here's the explanation. So this provides kind of a a presumption of compliance back into the rule so uh i heard from dep that there were concerns that it wasn't clear that if you met the 55 80 or 80 80 or what, whatever your requirements are in in 8.3 that that you could still be challenged like somebody could say i pulled a water sample out of your pond and you didn't hit 55% removal of nitrogen, you only hit 45. So you're in violation or worse, the department can come back and say, you've got to do more. So that that's the, the problem that DEP believes was being addressed by this change. All right, so we've, we've, you know, for the last two and a half years, we've been told, oh, we got to throw away the old presumption of compliance approach and we've got to have these new, you know, consistent application of net improvement stand we have we, it's a new it's a new world but what, what it boils down to is you know we don't like the new world we like the old world it just has new numbers on it uh, so this says uh you're entitled to the presumption of, of of compliance which is which is this reference the statutory reference of 41313b uh this is the presumption of compliance from from the from the current rule statewide ERP, all right? So y'all can scrutinize this in more detail, put your lawyer hats on and let me know if you see anything else in this. I don't see anything else in this. And this is what DEP explained to me when they gave me this. So that's change number one. This is amendment number one of four amendments yesterday. The next one is uh, changing yeah. 8.3. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Quick question. Yep. Um, it, it says uh, employing the structural best management practices specified therein. Uh huh. Um, Are you worried about non BMP yeah. based? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay, I think that that's addressed in 8.3.1. Uh, maybe because of this. Um, Maybe it needs to be thrown back in here too, but I think 8.3.1 is going to address that part. This next change. All right. Yeah, because you're right. Otherwise, the provision in 9.7 that says you can do on site or off site doesn't work if you only get entitled to presumption if you do structural BMPs. Right. Um, all right. But 8.3.1, uh, according to DP, address that by adding these underlines. So this strike and underline does not appear in the amendment. It does not appear in 7040. It will not appear in the, the committee substitute for committee substitute. So to understand the effect of the amendment in, in line with the current rule, DEP did this strike and underline version. So um, what, what this says is, is uh, so this is changing 8.3.1 of the applicant's handbook to add determine which BMPs without the underline it just says determine which BMPs will be used to meet the required TN and TP reductions and then 
This enlarges that to address the fact that in 9.7, DEP says you can do BMPs or you can do offsite uh, over treatment or regional stormwater management system to meet the TN and TP load reduction. So, so this language enlarges it. So you can say which BMPs or other treatment and reduction options. So that would include those provisions of 9.7. And then you've got to meet the required TN and TP that are equivalent to or exceed the applicable performance standards. And this language right here, this equivalent to or exceeds the applicable performance standards language, that, that comes out of 9.7. So that's consistent with that language. And that addresses the idea, again, that if you all remember from many conversations about one of the largest changes of the new rule is you no longer have to meet your requirements on site. You just have to meet them in an equivalent manner in a way that doesn't harm the resource, but you can go offsite now. All right, so that that's a that's a tie-in back to that, Mark. And and John Coates thinks that this tie-in controls. You know, th this is more about, and and this is how I would address it if anybody ever you know is concerned about it at the staff level. If you're doing structural BMPs on site, then your 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 job is to reach the number that your BMP trains spits out. And that number might be 55, or it might be 80, or it might be 40, and you're supplementing with offsite. Okay. When you do that, you're presumed to meet the BMP trains number. You have legal presumption to meet the BMP trains out output, or whatever your alternative design standard output. It, it does not require, you are not required to sample to confirm. You are presumed to comply. That's what this does. This is the tie into 9.7. And then the last one is, again, I, I, I call this comfort language. Uh, uh, John Coates thought it was the same. It was also comfort language. Um, this basically says if you're providing reasonable assurance that all this stuff happens, then you are demonstrate, then you ha shall have demonstrated to meet the performance standards. So if you're modeling calcs and supporting documentation gets you to 5580, then you are you have you have demonstrated that you've met the performance standards. You do not have to go do sampling. So I think this is uh, DEP characterized this as a belt and suspenders. They they never said that that sampling would ever be required, but I think there's fear that sampling would be required, and so this eliminates that fear, or I should say reduces that fear. So any questions on these three? These are all in this insert between 109 and 110 amendments. There are three of them. They all got, if you look in the in the records of what happened yesterday, they were all technically they were they were filed and then they were withdrawn and replaced by committee substitutes. So the the CS for CS for 7040 is going to insert that language in here. All right, the other one. This was another kind of head scratcher, not a head scratcher, but you could see there was a lot of consternation about it, is the, the organization of this bill creates right now, well, in, in the Senate, it's already changed, but, but, but prior to yesterday, 4131, which is the statewide ERP statute, which got added to uh, with section six, to create to require DEP to do statewide stormwater, this bill creates section seven, which is the it's the ratification section. All right, so so it it, it inserts a new or adds a new amends on appends on to four one three one a new subsection seven, and and then all this stuff goes in under that. The the other late filed amendments from yesterday added an eight and a nine. Um, Unfortunately, for the people that are going to have to write all this together and reconcile this in the future, uh, eight and nine are related to grandfathering, and so is 7A. <laughs> so instead of inserting uh, behind A more grandfathering stuff, they add an eight and a nine, which are down, which are going to be down here. See what I mean by how that's going to be unfortunate to, to navigate that. 
Um, the the eight uh, expands. I do have the bill text here. Give me one second, please. Too many screens open. Here we go. Um, yep, okay, here's nine. Sorry, I wanna do eight first. Here is eight. So eight um, is, is interesting. So, so what this is saying is, this is going to be my summary of of how it's been explained to me, not my legal interpretation. Um, that if you have already gone through, you you're you're a developer, you're you're an engineer for a developer, you have already signed and sealed uh, drawings for permitting that were submitted to a local government by before January one. So this is this is this is doesn't grandfather anything ahead of today or ahead of last year, but anything that has already been submitted to local government, for for example, for a DRI, for a part of a PUD, um, or, or, or any regional stormwater management system, um, that maybe so that's a master stormwater management system for a DRI or for, for a PUD, or a, you know, larger a sector plan, th those kind of things. If those have already been signed and sealed and submitted, so it, notice it says it's got to be signed and sealed. Um, the these drawings, so this reference pursuant to, to chapter sixty two three thirty means since since this was prior to January one twenty four, if if you have already signed and sealed drawings for ERP, right? Because this is pursuant to 62330. So ERP drawings and have already submitted it for another purpose. So maybe you haven't submitted it to the water management district. If you did, you'd already be covered under a current grandfathering statute. See what I mean? I think that's why this is being seen as an enlargement is, is let's say for whatever reason you did an ERP design for your client for a local development process. You never submitted it to the water management district. DEP. That is now grandfather. Which which is silly because they could go do that today. I agree. I think this is totally built in suspenders, Mark. And and when I talked to DEP about this, they told me that somebody believed that they were left out. So this somebody who <laughs> believed they were left out had enough juice to get <laughs> Senator Mayfield to file this on her own bill. Okay. All right. DP doesn't think it 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 enlarges the grandfathering universe by one iota. Right. So this this one I I consider silly. Well, right. I think it it must mean that they think it meets the intent of the original concept of grandfathering. Well, I hear you, Bob. However, comma, let's say this happened. So, and and the meet the intent is not going to hold muster when this is just an additional grandfathering provision. So it's not a, a new standard. It just adds this category to the standard that already exists. And the standard that already exists for grandfathering is if you do a major modification, you lose your grandfather. So that the spirit yeah. of won't work. At least it, it at least it's not in here. This. This idea that I'm going to do a, a 62330 design for a DRI or a PUD or a master stormwater plan for a PUD, and then I, if I have to go change it because a road moves or whatever, and, and the water manager district says, well, that's now a major. Well, that if if you can't win that fight between minor or major or grandfathering or loss of grandfathering, if 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 this new section doesn't create any new opportunity or any new doesn't give you any more weapons in that fight. See what I'm saying? It's still the same fight, minor or major. Yes. Okay. All right, the last amendment added in new section nine, and I do have it here somewhere. I keep, sorry, I'm hunting for these things. Uh, it added the um, EMAs. So ecosystem, <laughs> this is another one. 
where there may be one or two out there. There are not a bunch of these. But if you already did a binding, you already have an approved binding ecosystem management agreement executed under the statute. So EMAs have a separate statute, but EMAs do incorporate you know, ERP and waste cleanup and all, all kinds of stuff. It's a it's an it's an interesting tool if you've never been involved in it. But it's it's an all-encompassing like master general permit kind of idea that that can be attached to things that are really large, like sector plans, you know, uh, et cetera. Th this post-data DRIs. There are, there are no DRIs with ecosystem management agreements, but there are sector plans with ecosystem management agreements. If you have one of those, it's binding, and it's binding executed prior to January 1, then you are exempt. So this one is different. This is not a, a grandfathering. This is an exemption. You do not have to to declare yourself a minor to preserve, you know, any any modifications that are authorized under your EMA that are, that are within the scope of authority of your EMA, you don't lose any scope of authority under that EMA. So 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 this is truly different. I could see this being a nine, you know, a new number because it's not grandfathered. And that's my report. 934 kept you over. Anybody have questions? If you want to, they're not fast. You want to email them to me or talk to me offline. Let me know. Hey, Jeff. Next week. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, real quick. Um, and I'll show it or you can pull it up. But the 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 committee filed substitute for these amendments exempts DRIs that have been already submitted. So it's a little bit different wording. Sorry to throw that on you, but I just no, just no, found. No, it. I I'm glad you corrected me. There was a lot of, so it's not so, this one. There was a no, substitute no, no. amendment. Pull up, pull up the one that happened after the committee meeting yesterday. Oh, they did it in a committee substitute after. Yeah. Wow. On seventy forty. Yeah. There was some some teeth gnashing about how, um how much late filed nonsense was going on. I'm following now. So you're saying this guy replaced by substitute amendment? 242, yes, that one. Yeah. Open that one. Same Scroll eight. down, to, it's got a 10 now. No, it, not that. What are you looking at? That's not what I'm looking at. There's a 10? Yeah. This, this is ridiculous. There were there were withdrawn amendments, Mark. So I want to make sure you're not looking at a at a withdrawn. I may have to get with DEP just to triple check. I mean, we, yeah, we will I'll all see it. it. I, I may be. I thought I was looking at the latest one. Nine. No, no, you're right. You're right. I was 14 minutes too early. It got it got withdrawn, right, and replaced. Yeah, look at the bottom one down there. I, I, my apologies. <clears throat> the one, the one at the very bottom. Yeah. There was a 10. See how crazy this this whole day was oh, yesterday. Yeah, it was definitely crazy. Uh, signed for DRI. It's really fascinating. Yeah, there hasn't been a new DRI. In 10 years, I know, and that's that's the crazy part. But like you said, somebody thought they were being left out. So this was this would be another exemption like the EMA, not a grandfathering. Right. Yeah. But this was not I, I do not believe this was taken up and passed yesterday. But Good. I will I will okay. triple check. And as soon as I know the final answer, I will send a clean SV740, you know, CS for CS that has all the final final changes that were passed yesterday. As soon as I have it, I'll I'll send it out.
All right, anything else? Hey, Jeff, early on in, in the session, I said there was a bill that was filed that affected special districts. And I haven't looked at it lately, but I thought we were going to track that. Do you know what happened to it? And then term limits for board members. And I, I know that all of the special districts folks have been all over that, so I have not even looked at it once. Um, gotcha. AFCD does a weekly legislative report and I've seen it in there. I, I will grab that latest AFCD report and I will flip it to you, Bob. Thank you. Their, their attorneys and uh, lobbyists are all over that. The All the special district folks don't want to be caught up in any, any of that nonsense that may be directed at Disney or whatever. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention as always. And uh, more to come next week. Next week, I will know what week it is. <laughs> That's Thanks, my goal. Thanks, Each week, Jeff. I'm trying to improve. Next thank week, I want to know which week of session it is with certainty. Not and, a, and be able to know, divide nine four, by five. half or what, what was it? Nine by divide nine by two. Was that the other perplexing problem this morning? Yeah, the problem this morning is I could not understand. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. Do I round down or round up? This is Friday. I think I should be rounding up. I think this is week five, but I'm not 100% sure. Next week, I'm well, going to be 100% sure. Your, to your defense, Alan had no idea either. So it doesn't. <laughs> it's Tallahassee time, right? It's like completely yeah, at, at this different. point. Yeah, we're we're all we're all just trying to survive. That's right. All right. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate Thank you, Jeff. it.